11 years ago, but I'm not today. I'm not today. And that's the cycle of coaching. Uh, sometimes you run your course, you've had your run, and it's ready to pass it uh, to the next guy. Well, for the first time in almost 11 years, Steve Spurrier will not lead the South Carolina Gamecocks onto the field at williams Bryce Stadium. But today they will have a new coach in Sean Elliott as the Gamecocks come back home to take on the Vanderbilt Commodores, two teams searching for their first conference wins of 2015. It has been a crazy two weeks here in South Carolina. Of course, they had the 100-year flood, a deadly and devastating flood that occurred in the state of South Carolina. That was forced the game with LSU last week to be moved to Baton Rouge because of potential drain on essential personnel and so many other issues involved. They would go on to lose that game 45-21. to And then the shocking news on Tuesday when the legendary head ball coach Steve Spurrier decided it was time to end 26 years as a college head coach and move on as he resigned, turning the keys over to the car so that South Carolina David and assistant coach Sean Elliott would now drive this South Carolina bus. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dave Neal. This is former All-American at Georgia, Matt Stinchcomb. Glad you could be with us. And, boy, it is a strange day in college football to not have Steve Spurrier on the sidelines at a game on a Saturday afternoon. You've played this game for a long time. You've talked about it for a long time. You've played against Coach Spurrier. Your thoughts about... What do we mean to not have him involved in college football right now? You know, it was almost a seismic event when that announcement was made this past Monday because you're talking about maybe the most accomplished individual this conference has ever seen, not only as a player, but as a coach over the better part of a quarter century. He's dominated this conference and established tradition, not at one program, but at two. And you look at the wins that he's racked up, 208, 86 of those, recently made here at South Carolina. And Sean Elliott with a visor in hand, getting ready to lead the team out on the williams Bryce Stadium field in front of nearly 80,000 on a glorious day. The Gamecocks getting ready, an emotional man, a salute and a tribute to Steve Spurrier. emotional day for that man. He grew up coming to game stadium and now he gets to lead the South Carolina Gamecocks against the Vanderbilt Commodores. Yesterday in our meetings he talked about high energy. He, wanted, he wasn't concerned that it might be too emotional. He wanted that emotion to lead into the game today and he is certainly a high strung man. You probably didn't sleep very much last night. Let's find out more about his feelings. Let's go downstairs, Casey Smith. Coach, the first time to lead this team out as the head coach, how did that moment feel? Unbelievable, unbelievable. We've got a great group of young men. We've got a tremendous fan base here. We're excited to play. It's a thrill of a lifetime. How was the emotion in the locker room today? Like a rock concert. It was emotional. Really good, really good. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> he looks like he's already played a game. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Sean Elliott, he is high energy, and uh, he loves his guys, the O-line coach, and certainly 
It's a new day of South Carolina football. Well, we've talked a lot about South Carolina. Let's not overlook this Vanderbilt football team in the second season under Derek Mason. This is a team that maybe on the, in the wins and losses can't really see a huge improvement, but when you look at the stats, Matt, this is a different football team. There's no question improvement has been made, and none more evident really than on the defensive side of the football. When you look at what Derek Mason has done over the breadth of his coaching career, it's been defense and his ability to coordinate them, and he took that over the back end of the season, the regular season finale versus Tennessee. You could tell that that defensive unit under Derek Mason's coordination was an entirely different defensive football team, and that's carried over into this season, and you can see the improvement. It is drastic, and that has been their stronghold for this season so far. They need their counterparts to step up, but as of right now, Derek Mason's defense playing very good football. Well, Derek Mason has been in this situation before when he was an assistant at Stanford. That's when USC let Lane Kiffin go, and they hired Ed Ogeron, and so he has seen this before, but I don't know that he's seen this kind of emotion. This was Sean Elliott pregame. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Take it down! Then he decided to run clear across the field, tap everybody that was wearing a jersey on the back, give them high fives, got the emotion going, and then I have never seen this before. You're an O-line guy. You ever seen this? I've never seen it. That's a brave man. I'll tell you what, I don't know who should be scared, the players or Sean Elliott, because he was getting after it. That looked almost reminiscent of Ert Russell, headbutting players on the sideline, but you can tell Sean Elliott is a charismatic leader and a guy that's bringing a lot of energy to the field. Well, the new era is underway. USC won the toss. They defer. Vandy will get the football first. That'll be a touchback. And Johnny McCrary will be the man leading the charge for the Vanderbilt offense. He has had some impressive numbers. It's been kind of an up-and-down start to the season, but yet coaches think he's the guy. Yeah, they like the way he has progressed. Needs to make better decisions with the football because, as you can see, so much of Vanderbilt's offensive success flows through Johnny McCrary's contributions. He's a mobile guy, a guy that can keep plays alive, but he needs to make good decisions with where he goes with the football and avoid those crucial turnovers. McCrary, the sophomore out of Decatur, Georgia, 6-4-2-20. This Vanderbilt offense averaging just over 21 points a game. That's 12th in the conference, but they had from a year ago. They just had trouble getting it in the end zone. First play comes near side. Darius Sims, a guy that they really want to handle the football a lot more here in the second half of the season, gets the first catch at a gain of 12. You can see Darius Sims, such a playmaker for Vanderbilt a season ago, but as you mentioned, Dave, they haven't done a good enough job of getting him his touches. He is one of the few explosive playmakers that Vanderbilt needs to start to be able to count on. It's got to be more than just Trent Sherfield and Ralph Webb in the offensive backfield. They move the chains on the first play from scrimmage. It'll be first down and 10 from the 38-yard line. South Carolina's defense has had their issues all season long. They'll need to be tight today. That pass behind the intended target, Stephen Short, as we look at the Vanderbilt starting lineup today. And Ralph Webb has been their guy at running back. And Trent Sherfield on the outside has really made a name for himself. He's had to step up. They lost C.J. Duncan, their leading receiver from a season ago in preseason camp. Sherfield has been a playmaker for the Commodores on the outside, but Ralph Webb is the guy that they want to center their offense around. They want to be a tailback-led offense, something they haven't been able to do throughout this season, but they want to be able to establish for the second half. He's carried it 25 times in three of the last four games. They'll line up in the eye, and there is Webb. He's the line and loses the football. Scooped up by South Carolina. Inside the 25-yard line, T.J. Holloman, and South Carolina is in business. I'll tell you, Dave, you couldn't script it better if you're Sean Elliott. you got a fired-up football team. You've got fans in the stands in your first start, and you've got a chance to get a quick turnover, and it looked to me like Ralph Webb ran right into the back of Ladarius Banks, his lead blocker, and it popped the football out. Regardless, excellent starting field position for this South Carolina offense, and this is an energized stadium. Obviously, the stadium, the stadium and sidelines have a lot of emotions, but you tack on a quick turnover and a big swing of momentum early in the game. 
That is only the second fumble recovery by the South Carolina defense this season. Let's see what the offense can do with it here. Oh, first play. Perry Orth is destroyed. That'll be a loss of 11. Zach Cunningham, who has just been putting up some incredible numbers, continues his tear defensively. You know, that pressure really was set up by Stephen Weatherly. One of those guys that they think could be a difference maker, flushed Orth out of the pocket, right into the arms of Cunningham. Between he and Darian Herring, they're the playmakers for this Commodore defense at their second level. There will go far side. Farrell Cooper trying to make a play. He's inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. They'll pick up six there. And right away, the first two plays, looks like South Carolina trying to throw the football. We thought they'd be a little bit more run heavy, but through two plays going to the air. You can see that they want to get Perry Orth established early in the game. Excellent field position to start out with. See if you can't build his confidence. We anticipate that South Carolina will emphasize getting the ball out a little more quickly than they typically have. Fewer seven-step drops, getting the ball out on quick timing routes. Third down, Orth. That pass is low and incomplete. So now you're at the 29-yard line, and you're looking at fourth down, and they'll bring out the kicking unit. Jameer Jeffrey was the intended receiver. We've mentioned that this Commodore defense has paced their team all season long. That is a big stop after getting a turnover early on in this game, knowing that you've got a juiced up South Carolina offense to get that tackle for loss. That was a big play by the Commodore defensive unit. Well, Elliott Fry is a really good kicker from the far hash. This one from 47 yards away. And they'll take the three to start the game. So Fry now 12 of 16 on the year with the 47-yarder. 3-0 lead for South Carolina as Ralph Webb fumbled the football on Vanderbilt's opening possession. And South Carolina able to take advantage and get the 47-yard field goal from Elliott Fry. Boy, we have seen Sean Elliott that past uh, six years as an O-line coach, co-offensive coordinator. We've seen the emotion. And you sometimes see head coaches, when they get that title, kind of tone that down a little bit. No. Not Mr. Elliott. <laughs> uh, I don't see that happening. I mean, he was almost out of breath talking to Casey. He was so wound up. Sprint out with that visor in his hand. This kick will sail over the hedges and into the front row behind the end zone. So another touchback. And let's go downstairs to Casey Smith again. Well, Dave, you guys are absolutely right. Sean Elliott is not toning it down down here on the sidelines. He just talked to Mike Matulis and said, hey, we cannot beat ourselves today. We're better than that. Let's communicate. And offensive lineman Mike Matulis said that coach dared them to match the intensity. Well, they're definitely going to have to do that today. Thanks, Casey. And along those lines of intensity, we touched on it briefly. Derek Mason, having been through this type of situation before, told us in our meetings this week that he really wants his team to just kind of weather the storm early in terms of emotion. And so far, they have defensively, obviously. The offense, though, putting their defense on a short field, but getting that stop and holding the field goal would count. Well, Dallas Rivers coming in at tailback. Pickup of 11. Excuse me, Darius Sims on that carry. Dallas. It's, it's obvious, Dave, already. They're going to get Darius Sims his touches in this game. They already got him in the passing game early, and now the first carry of this series. And they'll go to Sims again. He, he is met right away at the 33-yard line. Rico McWilliams there to make the tackle. That'll be the challenge, I think, in this ball game. So far, what we've seen is horizontal passes from Johnny McCrary. Easy to complete, but to challenge the South Carolina secondary to be sure tacklers in space. The more touches they can get Darius Sims, though, Dave, is ideal for them offensively because, as we've mentioned, both of these offensive units, they've had difficulty with explosive plays, 20-plus yarders. Sims is one of those types of guys. First charge timeout, South Carolina. So the Gamecocks will take the timeout. They were going with two tailbacks in that backfield as Ralph Webb checked back in alongside Dallas Rivers. So on a second down and 11. You know, defensively, John Hope was brought in as a defensive coordinator for this South Carolina team this year. And the numbers have not been very well, and he is just looking for some consistency. He repeated that 15 times last uh, couple days ago in our meetings. We seem to play well. 
series or two, play or two, and then there's that moment that makes you go, oh my gosh, what are we doing? So he, he feels like it's there, but they just haven't put it all together. Right, you know, and it made adjustments. You know, they, they slid Sky Moore from the middle linebacking position to allow T.J. Holloman to play their mic backer spot so that they could get more playmaking ability at the linebacker. But they're also rotating Jordan Diggs and D.J. Smith at safety today to try to get that level of consistency. McGrary will throw. Hit Sims. Boy, you can tell that number six is a big factor in this game plan, and he stays on his feet. Finally dropped after a gain of about eight and a half, maybe nine, by Isaiah Johnson, among others. Yeah, Sims has three straight touches, attempted touches by this offense, making sure that he's getting the football early. And you can see already Darius Sims had a nice run earlier, but this Vanderbilt offense, despite the fact that they want to run the football, they throw it more often than any other team in the conference. Johnny McCrary, right now, these are basically extended handoffs, but it's the third and short scenarios like these where you have to be able to run the football. Vandy's second in the conference in third down conversions, over 43% on the year. That goal with Sims. He'll pick it up right at midfield. It'll be first down and 10 for Vanderbilt and a six-yard gain for Sims. One of the things that Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator, came down to Vanderbilt from Wisconsin a season ago. He likes to do a lot of formation shifts. We saw them bring Stephen Shoy from one side to the other. Sky Moore had a chance to get a tackle in the back, but was unable to get it. Got the conversion for the Commodore. Near side, pass caught, short field. He's inside the 45, down to the 43. That's a gain of seven. And we've seen Vanderbilt do this this year. They picked up a lot of yards. Matter of fact, they have posted 400 plus yards in three of the first five games. They just got to find a way to score and get the Reds. Right. That's the thing. They've been able to move the football at times, but they have to be able to capitalize, come away with points. They'll fake it to Webb, bat it in the air, and it falls to the turf. That's the danger you see that with some of these quick passes that come out early. The defensive linemen kind of get into that rhythm as well. We can't get up there and pressure you. We got to get our hands up. Defensive line coaches make sure that they kill their charges. Look, if you're not going to get up field quickly enough, make sure you get your hands up. That was Brucey Whitlow, a guy that they like a lot, a natural pass rusher. Nice instincts there getting his hands up. That's a true freshman out of Opelika, Alabama. So now it's third down and three. Flags are down. Before the snap, ball start, number 66 offense. Five yard penalty, so third down. Blake Fromank, the junior. Well, you know, we mentioned Lucy Whitlow. Blake Fromank's lined up across from him right now. They'd like in Whitlow's first step to Jadavian Clowney's. And I say it's not as fast as Clowney's, but if you're approximating what Clowney can do, you're doing pretty good for yourself. Fromang's a converted tight end. Got a little bit nervous on that third down. That's a big penalty to back them up in the sticks. Yeah, now you're looking at third down and eight. Changes the whole dynamic here. Six in the line of scrimmage. Now number seven comes up to the line of scrimmage. Let's see if they bring the heat. They'll back out of it. It'll be a four-man rush. The Prairie throws to nobody. Incomplete. You can see when they motioned out of the backfield, the South Carolina checked out of the pressure, but they still brought a line stunt inside, and it was just enough to get Johnny McCrary off of this spot in the pocket. Well, as much as Vanderbilt has thrown this season, McCrary has not been very accurate. You're talking about in the 50% range. And as much as they air it out, they're going to need to get those completions, especially downfield, to convert thirds. Tommy Openshaw will punt it away. It's a line drive kick. Fair catch called for by Farrell Cooper. And South Carolina will have it inside the 15 when we come back. Gamecocks lead it by three here in the first. Dari, uh, just keep in mind, however, Ole Miss got off to a 14-0 start earlier today, and that didn't go so well at the conclusion of that matchup with Memphis. Well, if there was a team in this league that can score quickly, it's Texas A&M. They've got a lot of speed on that field here today. Let's see what South Carolina does on their second possession. 
They'll hand it off left side. Nothing doing there for Brandon Wilds, who's back on the field. Of course, there was some discussion about Brandon last week. Didn't feel he was ready to go. Coach Spurrier was expecting him to be his starting tailback or play at least play quite a bit. And before the game against LSU, said he didn't feel well, had bad ribs. Kind of surprised everybody, but he's been uh, at practice this week, and I think Sean Elliott had a, a chat with him or two this week. And he certainly wants to get him back into that ground game, that's for sure. He was a big component, a big part of their plans coming into the season. Fourth will dump it off underneath. D.J. Neal, a guy they feel has some big playability, takes it out over the 35, close to the 40-yard line, 28 yards. Nice and easy right here. D.J. Neal's lined up in the slot. Watch him drag all the way across. Sneaks underneath. And he's a guy, as you mentioned, they want to get the ball to. Quick snap. They'll go to Wilds. He's over the 45 to the 47-yard line, a 7-yard pickup. That'll bring up a second down and relatively short. One of the changes that the players talked about was the tempo in practice. We're seeing it carry over now. Tempo on the field in game day. Ooh, Wilds was hitting right at the line of scrimmage. Doesn't look like he got any. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. But Wilds averaging 5.2 yards a carry. After missing three games with those bruised ribs. Now it's third down and three and a half. Barry Orth getting the start today. Coming near side, has a man, passes, caught and goes to Farrell Cooper. First down, South Carolina inside the 30-yard line, 24 yards. Well, if you can get the football to Farrell Cooper, that's a winning strategy. Somebody busted on their route, that's for sure. Looked like Hayden Hurst, a true freshman, had no business being that close to Farrell Cooper, but that was a route that South Carolina had success with last week versus LSU. Inside handoff. Wilds inside the 25. Right now, South Carolina has Vanderbilt defense back on their heels a little bit. That tempo and the big play is a gateway for them to get right back over the football and snap it. Nice first down run by Brandon Wilds. Or play action, pass caught over the middle. DJ Neal again, the four star recruit from Stone Mountain, Georgia, was drafted by the Atlanta Braves in the 32nd round, but wanted to play some football, might actually play some baseball here at South Carolina. Tremendous athlete, you could see why the coaches want to get him engaged in the offense, doing a good job here in this series of getting touches. First down and 10 from the 15 yard line. They'll go with Wilds. He's down to the 12. Jay Woods in the middle of that defensive line making the play. Boy, the coach has been saying Jay Woods has been playing really well. 280-pound sophomore out of Jackson, Georgia. He's a guy that's asked to anchor that interior portion of the Commodore defensive front. A guy that has to be active gap to gap to slow down the game caught rushing attack. And we've seen early on in this game, you know, there were some passes. But on this series, you can see the ground game gaining some of its momentum. They want to get into a rhythm in their runs. Bad snap. Orth recovers it. Will end up losing a yard on the play. Well, I couldn't see what happened to that snap. It didn't get back there, obviously. Well, it's true freshman. Zach Bailey in there at center. And when you have a zero technique, that means a nose guard right over your snap hand. You can get a little bit nervous. And it just never got back there to Perry Orth. Now, Alan Knott has been injured. He was the regular starter. Zach Bailey's got plenty of snaps, though, to avoid that error. That's a clean snap on third down. Orth over the middle. Cooper was there, batted in the air, and it's incomplete in the back of the end zone. Darian Herring with the tip that possibly saved the touchdown. Well, Darian Herring is a guy that's also playing much better football this season. Almost had a chance after the tip, Farrow Cooper. Stayed with that ball all the way, but an excellent job. We've seen a couple of tip balls in this game already. Darian Herring doing a good job with that pass breakup. Elliott Fry 
Trying to make it two out of two from 31 yards away. And that kick is solid and through the uprights. The third all-time leading scorer, Elliot Fry, has all six of South Carolina's points. So the Gamecocks have a nice drive. Couldn't get it in the end zone, but they'll take Team Spurrier, the legend, Heisman winner, head ball coach, South Carolina. I mean, he's not only the best coach in Florida history, he's the best coach in South Carolina history. No, no one else has done that. It's better sleep. I'm sad to see him go. The thought of Steve Spurrier not being a coach in college football, it makes me sad. I can always remember him with the swagger on the sidelines at the swamp. And this was not easy for him. He's a great competitor. He loves college football. And when he steps down, you know it's got to be something heavy in his heart that makes him do it. Well, only one guy did it better than Steve Spurrier in SEC history, and his name was Bear Bryant. This guy was uh, amazing. The head ball coach just liked to draw up plays, coach him up, pitch it around. It's fun to watch, wasn't yeah. he? I mean, it really was. His teams were so exciting to watch, and you never knew what you were going to get, literally, from a personnel standpoint, from a play calling standpoint, from, from a comment standpoint, before or after the game. Well, after the field goal, South Carolina will kick it away. Coach up in Ann Arbor this weekend. Not even here in Columbia as Darius Sims is brought down around the 24-yard line. A 20-yard return. Well, tonight we've got with the win today in Memphis at the Liberty Bowl. Wow. That is, that is a big, big upset. Memphis could score points. Who would have thought they would have slowed down that Ole Miss offense that way? Well, they get the football after the kickoff, and Vanderbilt has to use the timeout. Johnny McCrary slowly walking over, and Jared Mason looking over there to the assistant coaches, kind of figuring out, now why weren't we ready to run a play? That's hard to imagine, <laughs> especially coming out of a break like that. But regardless, you're know, looking at it, a Vanderbilt football team that weren't not they were moving the football relatively well in that previous possession until they got the false start the right tackle backed them up and put them at that third and eight really all season they've been pretty good on third down one of the better teams in this conference and converting these thirds a lot of that's been because they've been able to keep them more manageable than most really third and seven seems like that'd be kind of long that's not the case in this conference. That would be one of the lower distances to go to get the conversion. Ralph Webb and Dallas Rivers in the backfield alongside Johnny McCrary. After the timeout, let's see what the Commodores have in store for the South Carolina defense. McCrary dodging some trouble. Throws it back over the middle. It's incomplete. He was looking for Sherfield, but it'll be second down and ten. That's one of the things that McCrary can do is extend the play. We've seen South Carolina, John Hope, dialing up some pressure. This time bring it from the right side of the Vanderbilt offensive front. And that's what caused Johnny McCrary to flush off his spot. We've seen the Gamecocks pass rush be able to get there. They haven't gotten him on the ground, but they've been able to disrupt that timing and get him off of his spot in the pocket. Dangerous throw throwing back to the middle. McCrary averaging 250 yards through the air. That's third in the SEC. This time he'll stay on the ground. He'll have the first down over the 35 to the 37-yard line. McCrary has 34 rushes for 160 yards on the season. He throw in his sacks. It's a pretty good average at 4.7 per carry. Hey, well, that was a great fake that Johnny McCrary did. I mean, it really did look like he made the give and instead pulls and gets outside. And as we've mentioned, as much as they throw it, Johnny McCrary might be most dangerous as a scrambler and a runner on some of these QB design pulls. This offense, remember, they're averaging 412 yards a game. That's ninth in the league, but consider they were averaging 254 a year ago. They on the ground with Ralph Webb. He'll take it to the 42-yard line, give him five. Taylor Stallworth bringing him down, the sophomore out of Mobile, Alabama. South Carolina defense, especially up front. What they don't want is for Vanderbilt to be able to get Ralph Webb going on the ground. We've mentioned that's that's what they desire offensively is to make it their focal point and then play play action off of that. Take some of the pressure off of Johnny McCreary as a passer. 
A second down and five. They'll go with a couple of tight ends. Trey Ellis goes in motion across the formation, but the handoff goes to Webb. South Carolina not fighting. Only a gain of one. It'll be third down and four coming up. This is where, when you're looking at it from an offensive perspective, so ideal to have a quarterback that can threaten the defense if you move the pocket. Run pass options in these situations are so difficult, knowing that you put that perimeter defender in a bind. You come up and play the quarterback on the edge who could run for the first with this type of distance to go or just dump it over your head for an easy completion. McCrary runs the option. They'll have the first down. McCrary on the carry. Needed four, got five. Darius English brings him down. Pretty good job by the right side of the Vanderbilt offensive front, releasing and getting upfield quickly to the second level. Put a defensive end, Gerald Dixon, in a bind, making him make a decision. That's the beauty of the option play. You can always make that defender wrong. They will swing it out to Webb, who wasn't even looking. Incomplete. That was close to being a pass. A backwards pass. That was. Oh, yeah, it almost looked like a lateral. You're right. And even if Ralph Webb were looking, you know, that pass would have turned him completely around on those swing passes. You want to be able to lead your running back. You can see it there. McCrary behind the head of Ralph Webb, who hadn't even turned to make that reception. So now it's second down. They will say it was a lateral, so they lose the yardage, backed up four yards, and a big collision on the outside. Jonathan Walton coming up to make the play. Chandler Durrell with the catch. This is what they're asking are forcing the Gamecock defenders to do. This is quick pop passes, a quick stork pass out wide with the other receiver blocking on the defender and then forcing the Gamecock secondary to make tackles in space. That time, excellent job of getting Durrell on the ground. Delayed blitz. McCrary loses the football. It's still on the ground. Recovered by Webb, but a big loss back to the 31-yard line. A loss of 14. Darius English forced to lose football. Well, we've already seen Blake Flamang have a difficulty sitting in, the, sitting in his stance, but that time Darius English got a great get off, great first step, and was on the edge of the right tackle right away. And you can see as he's coming in, both of his arms free to strip the ball away from Johnny McCreary. Tommy Openshaw averaging 41 yards a punt this year. The second punt today. High spiral. Farrell Cooper will make the fair catch. South Carolina with the football. They're up six to nothing after a couple of field goals. Let's go downstairs to Casey Smith. Well, Dave, devastating floods hit the state of South Carolina two weeks ago. And through the tragedy, what these people in Columbia saw was support from the rest of the SEC, including Vanderbilt, who is here in Columbia today in Nashville. They sent two 18-wheelers full of water and supplies to Columbia. And they said that the, 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 the Nashville was overwhelming. They said that they had so much water that they had to give the Red Cross in Nashville the extra water. The football players were very involved. And I'm hearing that Vanderbilt said they just wanted to show the support from the league. Yeah, the community here that uh, we have been around, certainly very, very thankful for all the support that they got from uh, the surrounding communities. Boy, this conference really steps up when others need help. Farrell Cooper. Another big catch by their big play receiver, 23 yards. A formation that we will likely see more of for South Carolina, something that Sean Elliott said that he would implement. Two back sets, but also seven-man protection to give Perry Orth the time to deliver the ball. Quick to the line. There goes Brandon Wilds running hard. He'll pick up another five yards. And that's what Sean Elliott told us yesterday. I love the five-yard run. Yeah, <laughs> who, you know, who won? You back a couple of those up, you get you a first down. But he likes having his running backs in there. He likes that two-back set. 
not only does it give you flexibility and protection like on the previous play, but you also have two ball carriers and potentially the quarterback as a third in your offensive backfield. The throw, near side, Ooh, dangerous throw, but Cooper is there, makes the catch. I think he had enough for the first down. Going to be very close to the line. Darian Herring pushes him out of bounds. Watch wow. how close this was to getting picked off, perhaps. Oh, it looked like Arnold Tar Tarpley, too, was trying to get up, and instead of playing the ball, he was playing the block. Otherwise, that's easily picked going the other way. They will give him the first down. A little scrimmage from the 44-yard line. And flags are down. Before the snap, false start, number 11, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Barrow Cooper on the far side of the field. We've seen negative yardage plays derail a couple of Vanderbilt possessions. It's also hurt South Carolina. Bad snap in the red zone. A negative yardage play on the first possession on a quick turn. And you start these series especially on first down at first and 15. They've got to pick up a first down and a half to maintain possession. Perry Orth, by the way, 6 of 8, 94 yards to start this game. Got hammered as he let that one go. Incomplete. Let's go to Dari. Straight Alabama roll is on, guys. Wow, didn't see that one coming. Of course, a long way to go, but still shocking in the first half. Well, especially with the improvement that Texas A&M seemingly had made defensively with the hire of John Chavis. You know, it's hard, especially when it comes to stopping the run, to make that big of an impact in one season. We had Ole Miss loss. Or Ole Miss, uh, the loss to Ole Miss by Alabama maybe woke up that Crimson Tide team a little bit. Certainly somebody rattled their cage because they've been playing some pretty good ball ever since. Offensively, the Tide seem to play much better on the road than they do at home. I don't know why that is, but it seems to be the case on the back of Derrick Henry. Third down coming up, call it third down and 12. South Carolina one out of three on conversions today. They are 10th in the conference in that department at 37% on the year. Harry Orth completed six passes. Four of those have gone to Farrow Cooper. Probably the last play of the first quarter. Orth has plenty of time. Throws it underneath, pass is caught, but well shy of the first down. Maybe only got a yard when they needed a dozen. End of the first quarter. An emotional start to this one. Sean Elliott taking over the reins. The interim head coach honors the head ball coach with the visor on the run out. His oh, a good look at the South Carolina State Fair. Started back on uh, October 15th and will run through the 25th. How about the 166th year? The fair has been around. Just across the street from williams Bryce Stadium. Boy, a lot going on around Columbia. Had Def Leppard, Foreigner, and Concert. Had Brad Paisley last night. Also, the Allman Brothers were here at the fair. I didn't know that last Listen, one. Wow, right, right. We tried to get all of them. We just couldn't do it. <laughs> Made a tour. We ran out of time. <laughs> on fourth down to start the second quarter. Gamecocks will punt it away. It's out of bounds, and they're going to spot it inside the five, actually inside the two. A 43-yard punt by Sean Kelly, and now the Commodores are backed up. A lob wedge. A backspin, that thing just spun right out of bounds. The specialists so far for South Carolina doing a great job. If it's not Elliott Fry banging in these field goals and Sean Kelly pinning the Vanderbilt offense deep and in the shadow of their own goal posts in South Carolina an opportunity to get a defensive stop in field position if the doors can't get anything going from just outside the one yard line Vanderbilt will line up in the eye Ralph Webb is your tailback he'll get the handoff and he's met there but falls forward and picks up a yard and a half out to the three-yard line. Marquavius Lewis did a great job of crashing down from the backside. 
to make that tackle from behind. You know, you get into these situations, you practice it during the week. It's coming out offense. Well, you have to give your unit a little bit of room to operate, a little bit of breathing room. That run might have been enough to loosen things up. Play fake. Going out of the end zone. McCrary in trouble. Launches it up, looking for sure the tight end. It's incomplete. Boy, McCrary ended up in the field goal net along the hedges in the back of that end zone. Once again, you can see that. Once you get a little bit of room, everyone's expecting yet another run. That time, though, Marquavius Lewis able to elude a would-be cut block. Cleaned up by Dante Sawyer to get in Johnny McCrary's face. A dangerous throw. And now an incredibly difficult third down after that incompletion. The Gamecock defense is stepping up big on the heels of Sean Kelly's punt. Underneath, pass is caught. That'll be good enough for a first down. They'll end up spotting it around the 13-yard line, a 10-yard pickup. It went to Nathan Marcus, the tight end, hit by Sky Moore, but, boy, a huge completion. Nice protection. You see the line stunts. Ralph Webb released right in the middle. Nathan Marcus, that's a big catch to get them off of that and out of there. McCrary, once again, Dante Sawyer around his legs. You know, and eventually quarterbacks, that gets into their mind, whether you're sacking them or not. When they've got bodies landing around their feet, it gets them a little bit nervous. But Nathan Marcus, only a second catch on the year. That was a big one. Well, that's a third down that Vanderbilt last year wouldn't convert. McCrary stepping up. There's a flag back in the middle of that line. That'll go down as a loss of two on the play. Marquavius Lewis again making a play. Well, doing a great job up front right now in their pass rush. And the quickest place to the quarterback is usually by the defensive tackle. Jake Bernstein, at left guard, he's going to get called for a hold on Dante Sawyer. That's back-to-back -back plays where Sawyer is ending up right on top of the Vanderbilt pass. Holding field. offense, penalties decline, result of the play, second down. So they'll take the loss of two and make it second down. And 12 would have been half the distance to the goal line, so not a huge chunk of yardage that they're giving up. But right now in this game, John Hope, defensive coordinator for the Gamecocks, he mentioned they needed guys to step up. See Marquavius Lewis and Dante Sawyer on back-to-back -back plays. A couple of guys that they were expecting to get more production from and are in this possession. McCrary scooting to the near side, and he'll have the first down. Everybody was going to the opposite side of McCrary, using that six-foot-four frame, and gets the first down. He's such a long strider. He doesn't look like he's moving that fast. But what he does such a great job is if you take one false step, and that time Boosie Whitlow is the true freshman, he bit inside on that zone fake, and McCrary just pulls and runs. He's a guy that if he gets a step on you, he can get yards. It was more than enough. They'll go with Webb. Ralph on to the 28-yard line. T.J. Holloman there to make the play. Remember, this drive started back at the 1. They have gotten out of trouble, that is for sure. And look at that, a second down at about 5.5 here. A couple of big conversions. How big was Nathan Marcus's catch? But right now, Johnny McCrary, he's already demonstrated here early how dangerous he can be if things break down when he gets out on the perimeter. Fake it to Webb. McCrary will throw. Pass caught by Shoy. He'll get a couple of yards. They will mark it at the 31-yard line. So now you're looking at a third down at about three and a half. Jordan Diggs on the coverage for the Gamecocks. Jordan Diggs is a guy who's kind of on notice. He and D.J. Smith at the safety spot. They're trying to find a spot for both of those guys. Incomplete. Looking for Shoy again. That's twice now, Dave, where we've seen Vanderbilt receivers on these quick passes. Once Ralph Webb was a, a lateral. This time McCrary. You know, he was either early with that ball, but either way, that play was going nowhere. You can see that Chris Lamon's a guy that South Carolina just got back and healthy. 
He was upfield and all over Caleb Scott if he was the intended receiver. So fourth down, Vanderbilt will punt. Open Shaw. Another good kick, but Farrell Cooper with a chance to return it. He's a little bit of a hole. It closes quickly, and Vanderbilt able to take him down at the 31-yard line. A 41-yard punt. When we come back in Columbia, South Carolina on a gorgeous day. Couldn't draw it up any better. South Carolina leading 6 to nothing over Vanderbilt here in the second quarter. We are joined up in the booth by the athletic director of the South Carolina Gamecocks, Ray Tanner. And, uh, Coach, thanks for joining us. I know the last two weeks have been crazy. I certainly wouldn't want to be in your shoes. And I think the community here, and, and not just Columbia, but around the state of South Carolina, has really had to recover in a big way. And, and you know, we, we talk about this league, how the fans are always passionate about their team. But I think they're passionate about this league. What can you say about the, uh, the resolve of this community and those the support you got from around the area? Well, it's been very, very special. You know, we went through a very difficult time with the flooding. We had so many people displaced. We had loss of life. And then so many people joined arms and held hands together. And our conference step, the Vanderbilt, brought a truckload of water and supplies. What LSU did for us by moving the game and accommodating us was very special. There are difficult times that many people come together during those adverse conditions. And certainly it didn't end. Your week didn't end with the flood as you found out. Uh, I guess on Monday that your head ball coach was going to step away from uh, coaching the South Carolina Gamecocks as Perry Orth looks to throw on first down and has a wide open Adams. That'll be a first down for South Carolina. Take me through what happened. What I mean, with the coach, how you found out and how this whole process went down those, that Monday and Tuesday. Well, Coach Spurrier, he's been great since I've been the athletics director about communicating. We talked a little bit before the Missouri week, and he wasn't ready to step away or he didn't have that conversation, but he was telling me this might be the end of the, the, end of the year for sure, and then as the weeks went on, we talked. And then after we got back from LSU on Sunday, we spent some time together, and he said, I really think that it will be the right time. And I... I I tried to talk him out of it. I said, we can go to the end of the year if that's what you want to do. And the more we talked about it, he said, I'm, I'm convinced that it's the best thing for our football program, our university, to do it now. And, and you know, he's, he is a Hall of Famer, so uh, he convinced me it was the right thing to do. And the team has really rallied. They supported and we're celebrating his career. Here's Farrell Cooper with another first down. Tell us a little bit about the process of, of arriving with Sean Elliott, knowing that you had an opportunity to visit with some of the other members of the staff, and, and Coach didn't endorse any singular guy on his staff for well, this job. Well, on Sunday afternoon after we talked, and he said, you know, I want to tell you that I think we've got some, some really good head coach candidates, some good guys that can take over me in, in the interim. He said, so I'll let it be your decision. I don't want to endorse anybody particularly, but he told me on Monday night, I'm going to tell the players, and then you can talk to the coaches, and we'll go from there. So after practice, about 8.15, for the next couple of hours, maybe three hours, I visited with, with five of the coaches. Um, we, we had the, the interviews and went through the process, and soon after midnight, I called Coach Elliott, and I said, you know what, I feel great about you right now to take this team over. You have passion, enthusiasm, you're organized, and you love the game Gamecocks you have for a long time. Let's go. And he was excited, and you saw him come out of the tunnel today. Yeah. Okay, well, the next question, obvious question is, what is the process now for finding a replacement? Well, certainly we're going to try to get the best man for this job. We feel like that, you know, it's a very attractive job. Coach Spurry has, has taken this program to a different level, and I think we'll get a, a great candidate. Certainly Sean Elliott and what he does in this last six games, it, it counts a lot, but I think we're going to attract a, a top-caliber coach without question. One final question about your, your coaching position. There are a lot of other jobs that have come open recently. Does that make this job, to, the task of finding a new coach, a little bit more difficult? Where, how does that factor into it? I think it could be perceived that way, but I, I think more importantly, we've got to have someone that really wants to be here and put the root, roots down. We're, we're not a program where people come and go. We're, we're a destination. So I think that's going to play into it. We'll get the right person for this program here at the University of South Carolina. I'm sure you will. I, I can't thank you enough for coming up and uh, speaking on a couple of really big issues that have been around here in the Columbia and the state of South Carolina. I wish you all the best and good luck with the coaching sir. Well, thank you guys. It's great to have you here today. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Coach. Ray Tanner, not just the athletic director, great baseball coach uh, here as well and just a good guy, one of my good friends in the Southeastern Conference. And uh, it has not been easy 
And uh, for him and, and this community and this school and, and the fans here, it's been a, a wild and wacky uh, week, to say the least, around this football program. But if you're a Gamecock fan, so far so good. 39-yard field goal attempt off the foot of Elliott Bryant. It hits the upright. From the near hash, it is no good. So Fry misses for the first time today. He hit from 47, from 31, and that nice drive ends with nothing on the big board. Wow. The squandered a great drive. You could see it all the way down the field. The specials have played great, but the Gamecocks. Of course, when you have this middle of the day kickoff, that watch ESPN app comes in real handy. 9.04 to go, second quarter. Vanderbilt trying to get some points on the board, but that one didn't work. McCrary keeps it, and he has sandwiched Taylor Stallworth and Sky Moore. Sky having an unbelievable year. Leads the team, came in with 58 tackles. You see off the play fake, McCrary was looking to deal it right away, but Sky Moore in his face almost immediately. Really lucky to pick up enough yards to get almost back to the line of scrimmage. His Eyes were certainly downfield. See why Sky Moore has racked up 60 tackles so far on the season. Very active for the South Carolina defense. And now Vanderbilt chasing the chains again. Second and long over the middle. Pass is caught to Stephen Shoy. 11-yard pickup for the outstanding tight end. Broad pressure from the field. You can see not only uh, T.J. Holloman brought safety pressure as well, and Chris Lamons had to fold back in to make that tackle on Shoy. A season ago was Vanderbilt's leading receiver in every category. We already mentioned that C.J. Duncan never made it out of fall camp. Shoy's had a steady season, but it hasn't been as productive as it was a year ago. Getting him involved, but Trent Sherfield so far pretty quiet this game. Boy, a flag comes in, possible face mask as Ralph Webb spins and turns out to the 38-yard line. A tough six yards for Ralph. Holding number 56 offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, replay first down. Yeah, Sky Moore was knifing through the offensive front again. And that time, right guard Barrett Goger just tried to reach out with his left arm. Hit him with the old Western Lariat. See that right there? Sky Moore just went down. It's now first in 20. Almost like a clothesline. You see that, though, when linebackers time their run-throughs, it makes it difficult. These offensive linemen are trying to help on the down defensive tackle, and these linebackers are forcing the issue. Here goes Sims. He'll cut it back up. Darius Sims with a big hole. He has the first down at midfield. 29 yards on the pickup. Isaiah Johnson and Jordan Diggs had to chase him down. The second time we've seen Darius Sims line up and take a handoff out of the offensive backfield. And as we mentioned, it was evident. That Andy Ludwig wanted to get Darius Sims engaged in this game plan. And he's been a big part of what Vanderbilt has been able to accomplish. Biggest gainer of the game so far for the Commodores. And you can see that explosive playmaking ability out of Sims. 14.7 yards per rush today for Darius Sims. McCrary will play action to Webb. Looking to throw. Has plenty of time. Pass is caught at the 34-yard line. Goes to Caleb Scott, the sophomore out of Swanee, Georgia. Picks up 16 more yards for the Commodores. Caleb Scott is just running free on this route. Literally not a Gamecock defender within 15 yards. And when you see him right here, he's just going to watch him pop off of the line of scrimmage and then just gets lost in the wash. This Lamons lined up across from him initially and just let him go. McCrary will throw again, or attempt to throw again. That one was behind Stephen Shoy. T.J. Holloman put the pressure on the quarterback. Also brought pressure from T.J. Gurley, and that's the challenge. When you pressure in the same spot, oftentimes the extra block. Running back, tight end. There's only one of them. He's got to pick one of the two. T.J. Gurley got back there first, and T.J. Holloman was there to clean it up. And we've seen McCrary all game long have to deal with some pressure as he's trying to deliver the football. 
Five plays, 45 yards for the Commodores. It's their best drive of the game. McCrary has time, dumps it off underneath Ralph Webb with a stutter step, and he'll have the first down at the 20. He'll pick up 14 yards. Sky Moore will bring him down. But now the Commodores touching that red zone. Well, Vanderbilt started out nibbling at the edges of the Gamecock defense. A lot of horizontal passes, but now you see Ralph Webb. He just gets over the football and gets his quarterback a target. And we're seeing the Carolina defense. They're seeding so much ground in the middle part of their coverage. That zone is incredibly soft over the middle of the field. Over the middle. Pass knocked away at the goal line. Looking for Trent Sherfield, but this is the red zone that Vanderbilt has had a tough time cracking this year. They are just at 60% scoring. That is last in the conference in red zone offense. Such a difficult throw to try to make right there. Isaiah Johnson coming over from his safety position. See pretty good coverage. Even had to try to slide it over the outstretched hand of T.J. Holland. Vandy's also only scored a touchdown in the red zone 40% of the time. They've been there 20 times, only eight touchdowns. Second down and 10. McCrary, little shoulder fake. He'll keep it himself. Cuts it back to the 10. That'll be another first down. Give him 11. It'll be first and goal. We've seen that over and over here in this game. Either design runs, scrambles to extend the play. And Johnny McCrary, that's a pretty big body. 6-4 that can get forward. And he's able to get just enough yardage to make it a first and goal scenario. And as you mentioned, Dave, this is an area that has really concerned the Commodore offense. They've struggled once they get it into scoring position to finally punch it into the end zone. The Prairie dancing around. He'll lose a couple of yards. Had nowhere to go. Well played on the outside by Marquavius Lewis, who came in with 24 tackles in a sack, but has been on a tear lately. The junior college transfer had nine tackles against LSU. Well, the run of play action. You see Barrett Gojer pulling around. Johnny McCrary, that ball clearly was intended to roll up inside following Stephen Shore. And you can see Coach Elliott fired up with the defense bowing its neck in a first and goal scenario. Tenth play of the drive. Second down and goal now from the 13-yard line. Here's Webb. He's hit by Holloman. Falls down around the seven-yard line. Give him five yards. Good job by T.J. Holloman. We mentioned him earlier. As he dropped back into coverage, we've already seen him. Make his presence felt the first possession, getting that fumble recovery. Big third down for the Carolina defense. South Carolina's offense has been able to get the ball downfield, but only coming away with either field goals or field goal attempts. Now Vanderbilt with its best drive of the game and a scoring opportunity, a chance for the Gamecock defense to complete this red zone defense. Over the middle, big hit incomplete. D.J. Holloman hits Chris Quintera, who was slow to get up, and a flag comes in from the back. I wonder if they're going to say that this was a targeting call. Well, that flag came in really late. Quintera coming across. You see there the crown of the helmet, and it was bang, bang. Personal foul. Targeted defenseless receiver of the defense. The play is under further review. Well, I think that this cover, this might cover all the, the, the checkpoints. Launching, crown of the helmet, defenseless player. Uh, we, we've seen it before where seemingly it marks all the checkpoints. You see the ball down. Holloman coming in there to make a play. And, you know, crown of the helmet's one of the elements. The head and neck area is one of the elements. You see there. It seemingly meets all of those. The only part that's curious, Dave, is it was well after the play had been completed. There was two or three beats before that flag came shooting in. There's no flag. There's no flag. And it was right about now when that flag was finally thrown. That would be a huge loss for this South Carolina defense. Not only are you going to pick up a first down on third down scenario, 
the DJ Holloman was one of those defenders that John Hoke singled out. They had to make it a point, find a way to get him on the football field, and he's already made some plays for this Gamecock defense. I got to tell you, I mean, you know, by definition, that thing just about meets them all. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The penalty is half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Number 11, South Carolina is disqualified. Boy, that, as you mentioned, is a devastating blow for this defense, and it certainly had its issues in stopping people. And you take out one of your best playmakers. Yep. And you give Vanderbilt the first down. Exactly. You know, you're setting up a field goal attempt, and instead, that late flag, you get a fresh set of downs and ever closer to the goal line. First and goal from the three and a half. Under center, McCrary. Handed off to Webb. He is met at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Darius English crashing in for the defensive end spot. His fourth stop today. Darius English is playing a pretty good game. We've already seen him force a fumble, stripping Johnny McCrary. Now four stops on the game so far. A fresh set of downs so close to the goal line, you can't afford to see hardly any yardage. It's a big momentum swing when you get a penalty like that. You get that fresh set, allowing the offense another crack at your end zone. Dallas Rivers in the game at tailback. They'll hand it to him. Nowhere to run. He may have lost a yard. Great job by the left side of the South Carolina defensive front. Collapsing the right side of Vanderbilt. You see no push to be had. And Dallas Rivers, he didn't have a hole to run into. All he saw was a bunch of white jerseys. Jonathan Walton and Chris Moody did a good job of coming up and finishing it off. But it was that initial charge that was denied. 13th play of the drive coming up. Third and goal. McCrary wide open in the end zone. Touchdown, Caleb Scott. It's the second time where Caleb Scott has lined up just off the end of the line of scrimmage and has slid through. <laughs> the South Carolina defense. Watch the coverage just lose track of him. He just gets lost in the traffic and he is all alone on the opposite side of where he lined up. It's twice now we've seen that work out. Vanderbilt able to capitalize on their best drive, ultimately getting in the end zone aided by that personal foul. Point after. Up and through the goal post and with that Vanderbilt will take the lead. The targeting call on third down and goal sets up Vanderbilt with a first and goal. They cap it off with a touchdown pass. Vanderbilt has taken the lead at 7-6. Caleb Scott, the sophomore, with the first touchdown reception of 2015 for that youngster. 14 plays, 79 yards, 643 off the clock. That's a uh, big boy drive. Better than anything they've been able to produce thus far. Their first four drives, 26 plays, 86 yards, no points in that one drive alone. They almost eclipsed the yardage mark. 14 plays, almost 80 yards, and able to come away with six. With a kick taken at the seven yard line by Rod Talley. He's out to the 30 yard line. 23 yard return. Let's go back to that touchdown for a moment. We talked about the impact of losing TJ Holloman. Here's his backup, Bryson Williams, and then watch Chris Lamons as well. These two guys are going to be on different pages. Lamons is going to try to fight through the traffic on Caleb Scott. You see Bryson Williams. He's got a receiver crossing right in front of his face. The back out of the backfield causes him to flinch. But part of the issue that South Carolina has had from their consistency of play is communication. T.J. Holloman was one of those guys. He was a he would relay those signals and make sure that everyone was on the same page. Clearly, South Carolina defense not ready for that play. 
So on first down, here's Perry Orr. He had plenty of time to decide to tuck it and run. Good coverage downfield by Vanderbilt. That'll be a loss of a yard. Adam Butler getting in there to make a play. The junior out of Duncanville, Texas. A pretty good protection, but you're right. Nowhere to go with the football downfield and eventually breaking down in front of Perry Orr. The Gamecocks need to capitalize. They've had a couple of nice drives. If they can move the football into scoring position, obviously lamenting the fact that they've only come away with field goal tries. Fred and Butler with a sack on that, his second of the season. On second down and 11 now. Fourth will throw. Ball is dropped. Darrell Adams. That time hit him right in the hands. See Orth delivering this football. Darrell Adams clearly with an opportunity, easy reception. But you had to know in his head to feel the defenders, Trey Herndon and others in that secondary converging on him. And as it is, you forfeit all the yards you would have made had you completed it. South Carolina 1 of 5 on third down. This is a third down and 11. Perry Orth, by the way, having a pretty good first half. 9 of 14, 136. The former walk-on, recipient of a scholarship right before the season started. Good throw, and that one is dropped. That was plenty for the first down. Matrick Belton, the junior out of right here in Columbia, South Carolina, couldn't hang on. It hit him right in the hands again. Back-to-back -back drops. And an offense that just can't afford to have that, trying to get out of this hole, get a scoring opportunity. And instead, with a minute and a half to play, you see Perry Orth. You know, he's delivering these strikes. you got to get some help from his receivers. 1.28 to go before halftime. Fair catch called for by Ryan Orth. Well, we kind of thought this... Uh, the way the season's gone, that these two clubs would be probably be sitting somewhere in this area in a 7-6 to six game. Yeah, you're kind of sputtering, you know. You look at it, like both teams have been able to put together some drives. You know, we're not for that penalty. It's nothing but a field goal fest. First down and 10. Commodores do have a couple of timeouts in their pocket. Quick slant, pass caught. That should be good enough for a first down. That one goes to Trent Sherfield. 35 catches on the year for Mr. Sherfield. He's a guy that you know they needed him to come on and play quarterback in high school. Never played receiver before as a true freshman last year. McCrary trying to dump it off underneath. Looking for Dallas Rivers. It's incomplete. Clock will stop with 108. The second time where we've seen South Carolina do a good job getting their hands up, breaking up those passes. That time Dante Sawyer again from his defensive tackle position. You can't say enough about a defensive front's ability to do that. Disrupt the timing of everything. It's just as good as a knockdown by a cornerback. Second down. Seven guys on the line of scrimmage for South Carolina defensively. They'll send six. Back one off, and there was a hole in the middle of that defense, but Sherfield couldn't hang on. It'll be third down and ten. You're right, Dave. Showed pressure once again. Trying to bait Johnny McCrary. But once again, it's an open receiver downfield. If you're on target with that, that throw, Trent Sherfield's still running. As it is, facing that third and long. Johnny McCrary, he's had some difficulty with his downfield throws we've seen in this game. He's been most lethal is when he's had to tuck and run. McCrary, 12 out of 22 for 100 yards and a touchdown. Comes near side, dumps it off. That'll be shy of the first down. Ronald Monroe with the catch. The redshirt freshman out of Houston. But now you're looking at fourth down at about three yards. Timeout on the. So with 53 seconds remaining, Vanderbilt will punt it away. Fair catch called for by Cooper. He'll take it at the 18-yard line. 
So South Carolina with one timeout left. Down a point. Well, Derek Mason said it, that they just have to withstand the onslaught of the energy and emotion in that first quarter. And I think they've done a nice job of that. They really have. You know, the defense responding early after that first turnover on the opening offensive position for Vanderbilt, getting the ball and giving South Carolina such a short field and forcing the field goal attempts. And South Carolina only able to capitalize on two of those. They've given up some yards, but they've stiffened in the red zone area. Well, let's see what South Carolina wants to do here on first down. They will run it. Inside handoff, David Williams. He's to the 35. That'll stop the clock for a moment. An 18-yard pickup. Oren Burks brings him down, and one of our officials slow to get up. The umpire, you know, I think maybe he wasn't anticipating that ball to break out like that. David Williams did a good job of eluding the tackle, but he ended up clipping our umpire. There for a moment, you would have thought South Carolina, especially opening it up with a run, they might just play for half. That's uh, Johnny Hibbett, our umpire, that was knocked to the turf. He's shaken up still. He, he got up under his own power. David Williams kind of broke out, snuck up on some folks. I don't know if a cleat might have come up and... <laughs> Caught him right there in his lower leg. Yeah, Darian Herring. He kind of leg whipped or back around. And his cleat caught him right below the knee. Bam. I don't remember that uh, for a long time, seven officials were the norm. But this year across the board, across the board in the SEC, it's an eight official group. Made it official now. You'll be able to accommodate some of these tempo offenses. Make sure that they had an opportunity to officiate the game appropriately. Now it looks like everybody's okay to go. South Carolina with four wides looking like they're going to take a shot at this. That's some movement on the right side. Mason Zandy. It wasn't just Mason Zandy. It looked like everyone was anticipating that ball to be snapped. More of a miscommunication between Perry Orth and his center that time. We've already seen one bad snap earlier. It was an errant snap by Zach Bailey. This time, Allen Knott, the veteran, he was a little bit late with that ball. Snap, false start, number 74 offense. The clock was running under a minute. The false start carries a 10-second runoff. Set the game clock to 21 seconds. South Carolina has elected not to call timeout to save the 10 seconds. You see everybody. You see everybody's yeah. moving except the center. And it was Zach Bailey in there, the true freshman. He's had his difficulties. He was expecting that football a little bit earlier. So the clock continues to run. They'll hand it off again. Boy, a big run for Brandon Wilds. Now the clock stops at 11 seconds, and you're in South Carolina territory at the 45. You got a kicker who's hit a couple over 50 already this year. The clock to football, nine seconds to go. So you got a chance to make a play downfield. Get it near the 35, maybe anywhere between the 35 and the 40, and you think you've got a shot with your guy, Elliot Fry, who's been really good. Elliot Fry with one miss already. You know, the bigger thing, and timing-wise, it may not end up mattering. How do you not get out of bounds right there and force a clock? As it is, we want to get it in the field goal range so Elliot Fry can take a crack at those goal posts. Fry's hit from 51 and 52 this year. They'll swing it to the far side. Stutter steps to the 38. Timeout taken. 
South Carolina gets the timeout with two seconds on the clock, and you're right in that range where you think you might have a decent shot with Elliott Fry now. Well, as we mentioned earlier, most of the scoring in this game has been by the specialists. I'll tell you what, at the end of that run, Zach Cunningham, he got a handful of face masks on Brandon Wilds. No flag. That would have been huge. You're talking about another 15 yards at the end of this run. It changes the complexion of this attempt. As it is, a 55-yarder. We already noted there, that's three yards further than anything Fry has ever hit. Hit that career-long 52 against UCF a couple of weeks ago. Hit from 51 versus Georgia. This will be from 55 yards away from the far hash. Sean Kelly will hold. Drew Williams will snap it. The kick is on the way. No good. Had enough leg. Just missed it off to the right, and that'll do it for the first two quarters of play. And Vanderbilt withstands the early onslaught to take a one-point lead here at the break. Seven to six is our score. We'll have an interview with Sean Elliott when we come back. But first, it's off to the studio, our auto insurance halftime report. Dari, it's all yours. Oh, Dave, thank you much as we uh, do welcome you in. Coach, you told me before the game that this team has a lot of energy and emotion. How have you seen that carry through in the first? Well, I think our defense has been playing really, really well. You know, we've had some inconsistencies uh, offensively. We've got to go out and eliminate some mistakes. And, you know, sometimes you get overhyped and you do some stuff that you're not supposed to be doing out there. They've got to settle down. I think we've settled down. I think we've got a good plan. We've just got to keep the focus, play four quarters of football, and come out here. And Your offense has been able to move the ball but not been able to get in the end zone. What do you want to see happen in the second half? Well, we've got to put consistent three plays together. We'll have two really good plays, and then we'll have a missed assignment or a bust on some type of play that really puts us behind schedule. Uh, we've got to go ahead and just regroup a little bit. We've got to keep the, keep the, keep the focus and uh, come out and have a great second half. These guys are capable of doing it. They're going to come out. Watch it. Thanks, Coach. Sean Elliott, the interim head coach, his club down one here after two quarters of play in Columbia. Seven to six moments away from third quarter action. Now let's take a look at a tough and tender moment brought to you by Ballpark Flame Grilled Jerky. And Well, how about to start this one? Sean Elliott decides in honor, a tribute to the head ball coach, the visor, sports it as he leads the team out for the first time moments before kickoff. Thinking about the legendary Steve Spurrier, who stepped down, resigned as head coach Tuesday morning, and gave the keys to the car to that guy. A fitting tribute to start this field, this game off. You take the field with you know, the emblematic visor of the former head ball coach. You know, if anything, you can tell that. Well, this program, they don't feel abandoned. They don't feel like they were quit upon. They probably didn't like what happened, but you can certainly get the sense that they understand why it happened. And it doesn't seem like there's uh, there's any animosity. You know, some of the commentary has been around that. This is a program that seems like they've wanted to pull together. They just want to get on the winning side of the ledger again. Aiden Lacoste will kick it off. Down to the six, bobbled there, taken by Rashad Fenton, and Fenton out to the 18-yard line. Let's go down, check in with Casey. Well, Dave, Vanderbilt head coach Derek Mason said that he likes what he's seen from his team and their composure against South Carolina's energy and emotion, but simply put, he wants to just see better play on both sides of the field. He said on offense, he wants to see more sustained drives, and on defense, he wants to avoid the big shots and just slow down the South Carolina offense. The fact that they were able to withstand that early onslaught, they got their defense put in a short field. They turned it over on the second play from scrimmage. I thought real testament to this defense. No question. This game could have gotten away from Vanderbilt very quickly with that emotional ride and with a quick turnover. Well, it looks like another false start against South Carolina. False start, number 39, 76 offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Fourth. Gamecock penalty today. Now, how you want to start second half? 
Well, you know, they've been jockeying different centers in and out of the game. Now, Allen not in there snapping the football. You know, and it, and it wasn't just Mike Matulis, but it was Will Sport as his right guard position. The Rivers Bedenbaugh as well. Three different guys. And I'm wondering if the snap count, if the cadence in the different centers are thrown off their rhythm. Boy, that looks like a busted play. Almost like Orth didn't uh, know where he wanted to hand the football. Stephen Weatherly will bring down David Williams, a gain of two, but a, another shaky play here. Well, we mentioned you know, they're going to see some two-back sets, both potential ball carriers as Brandon Wiles and David Williams, and Orth initially looked like he was going to open up to hand it off to, to Brandon Wiles, who clearly felt he was the lead blocker on the play. Confusing to defenses and maybe to the quarterback as well. Orth on second down throws. Lost one up. Cooper had it in his hands. Would have been a big play. Instead, it'll be third down. Once again, that time Zach Cunningham got his hands up and disrupted Farrow Cooper's vision just enough. But that's oh. at least the third drop we've seen in this game where South Carolina receivers have had their hands on the football and were incapable of making the catch. Well, that was a really nice touch on that pass. He dropped it just over the hands of Cunningham. Receivers got to help out their quarterback, who's now 10 of 17 for a buck 44. No touchdowns, no picks. South Carolina, one of six on third downs today. Four. Has to come underneath, and Adams dragged out of bounds. Well shy of the line to make. He's at the 23, the first down marker's at the 29. He'll give up seven yards of the play, and here comes the punt team. And not the way you want to start the second half if you're South Carolina. And as you mentioned, you get the false start, you turn around, and you're having difficulty figuring out where you want to open up on the handoffs, busted plays. Versus a defense that's been more than opportunistic, done a good job of slowing you down in the red zone. Boy, good driving kick from Sean Kelly. Since Ryan White back to the 20 for a fair catch, a 52-yard punt. Well, tomorrow we've got here at 7-6, Johnny McCrary coming back onto the field after a touchdown pass late in the second quarter. To give his team the one-point lead, 13 to 24, 106 yards. Donnie also nine rushes for 19 yards. They'll use Sims, the playmaker, Darius Sims to midfield, cuts it back, brought down at the 37-yard line. No flags on the play, and what a start for the Commodores! A gain of 41. Uh, this time we mentioned T.J. Holloman. He's out of the game, and his backup, Bryson Williams, that time came underneath the block. He and Jordan Diggs at his safety position with poor run fits, opening up that alley for Darius Sims for the big hitter on the ground. How about his numbers? Four carries, 86 yards, averaging 21 and a half per tote. Coaches weren't kidding us when they said, we got to get six the ball more. That'll be Ralph Webb, close to the 30. Brought down by T.J. Gurley. Well, you talk about, from Derek Mason's perspective, the need for his team to ride the emotional wave as this game opened up. So the way that first half ended, South Carolina, they need to avoid the lull. And offensively, you came out, and you didn't really acquit yourself very well. You, know, you didn't do much with that first possession. Now defensively, after a big play, they need to answer the bell and get the ball back. Vanderbilt right now playing with a lot of confidence and clearly all the momentum. Second down and four. McCrary. Pass caught by Shoy. They'll spot his forward progress at the 23-yard line. An eight-yard pickup, and that'll move the chains. Once again, Johnny McCrary able to find open receivers underneath the safeties. A time in front of Jordan Diggs. More than enough yardage to pick up the first down. Nice clean pocket to operate in. You can see that with each successive snap, this Commodore team playing with more confidence. Having to put together a couple of drives. Out of the eye, they'll go with Webb. Big collision at the 19, a gain of four. Jordan Diggs, first one there. 
Yeah. Along with Sky Moore. But as you mentioned, you know, we were talking with the South Carolina coaches and staff, you know, what's wrong with a five-yard gain? Nothing. There's nothing wrong with a five-yard gain. It's exactly what you're looking for. You know, that time, Jordan Diggs was already on the ground, but Ralph Webb, he was running downhill with a full head of steam. Vandy with 127 yards rushing today. Loose football. McCrary will fall on it back at the 30-yard line. That'll be a loss of 11 yards. Well, I mentioned earlier, we've seen some bad snaps already, but this is a reach block. And Spencer Pulley, number 77, he's trying to get his hat to the play side. He's trying to reach that nose tackle. And when you do that, sometimes that snap goes the opposite direction from where you're moving your body. It's three snaps now where we've seen in this game. It's cost the offense momentum twice for South Carolina, and now Vanderbilt pick. Boy, it seems like Vandy today has really hurt themselves with some negative plays. McCrary over the middle, wide open, and short. He's to the 15, falls forward to the 13, and that'll be really close to that first down line. Jordan Diggs, Sky Moore again converge on the stop. That's 17 yards. But Shoy wide open in the middle of that defense. It's, it's been there ever since late in the second quarter. At least that's when Vanderbilt started to exploit it. Bryson Allen Williams was bearing down on Johnny McCrary. Credit the Vanderbilt quarterback standing in there in the face of pressure and delivering that strike. It's a big bounce back play, Dave, after the bad snap and the negative yardage. First down from the 13-yard line. Sims comes in motion, but McCrary will keep it. Johnny down to the 10-yard line. Give him three. Bryce and Allen Williams will get credit for that tackle. You mentioned it, T.J. Holloman, late in the second quarter. Their starting middle backer ejected from this game for targeting. A real playmaker on the team. Had 22 tackles, a couple of interceptions on the season. Had a fumble recovery early in this game. Eighth play of this drive. Two tight end set. Here's Webb running off the left side. He's inside the five. So now it'll be third and about a yard and a half. Marquavius Lewis with the tackle for South Carolina. And... Uh, Looking back on that penalty, last time Vanderbilt had driven the football in this area, Hancock were able to get a stop. You know, were it not for that penalty to extend their possession, give them the automatic first, the goal to go, the Hancock defense was able to stymie that drive. This is their second opportunity in this game to do so. Third down and short. Two tight ends set out of the eye. They'll give it to Webb. Tries to power his way for the first down. I don't think he got it. No gain. It'll be fourth down. Well, that time, we mentioned Bryson Allen Williams. That time he came in on the pressure. This time got penetration right away. Sky Moore finished this play, but Allen Williams was around the legs of Ralph Webb. A lot of times you see those short yardage scenarios. The back gets stuffed initially, but they keep their legs churning. You can get a defender around his ankles. It's hard to do that. Field goal unit coming out 23 yards away. Tommy Openshaw, 10 out of 15 on the year. From between the hash marks. And he splits the uprights. So three on the board on the the sack. Gamecocks win. Garcia with a brilliant game. What a moment for the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Boy, it was a moment. First time they ever knocked off a number one team. Our Affleck trivia question, how about this? Steve Spurrier is the all-time wins leader at two different schools at Florida and South Carolina. Can you name the other coach who holds that distinction? There are only two. Think about that for a moment. SEC schools, I might add. I got a pretty good idea. <laughs> How about that? You know, it was interesting. We showed that highlight. A lot of times this week, 
Coach Spurrier has been asked about his favorite moment, biggest accomplishment. You know what he said on Tuesday? He said his best moment, memory, accomplishment was the 18-game home winning streak they had in here. It included that game. But they went two and a half years without losing here. Here's Fenton, nowhere to go. He stopped at the 15-yard line. So much about building tradition at a school, though, is playing well at home. You know, playing yeah. in front of, well in front of your people, your fans. You know, that inspires a lot of folks. It engages fan bases. It's a big deal to win games in your own stadium. You can see, and it hurt him you know, at the beginning of last season to lose to A&M like that, have that streak come to a halt. But that certainly is something to be proud of. Well, they got their work cut out here against Vanderbilt. Down four. They have had trouble moving the football of late. Barry Orth has gone the distance at quarterback to this point. Handed off to Brandon Wilds. Wilds will pick up six yards on the carry. Brought down by Zach Cunningham, who's having a heck of a game. Eight tackles, three behind the line, including a sack. That's a good play, though, for South Carolina. They run that play well. It's a disjointed possession to open up this half. That's a good opening play for this series, anyway, to get out there on the edge. The offensive line does a good job blocking in space. Boy, a missile came flying in from the linebacking spot, and guess who that was? Zach Cunningham. Zach, who had uh, a career-high 15 stops against Middle Tennessee State in their last outing two weeks ago. That's the most they've had at Vandy since Chris Marv had 18 tackles in 2009. Well, there he is. He's right there in the middle, and it's basically the same play, pulling both of their guards on a buck sweep. That time, though, Mike Matulis wasn't quick enough out of his stance to get a hat on Cunningham. Third down, down for South Carolina. Or throws, quick hitter, slant, caught. Farrell Cooper, he's got some room to run. There is nothing but green grass in front of number 11. This will be 78 yards, and Carolina back out in front. It was so important for South Carolina to answer. And Farrell Cooper, that's all of the above right there. You got your playmaker and the ball in his hands. And a guy that can take a quick slant to the house, just like he did a week ago. A dangerous playmaker for South Carolina every single time he takes the field. I mean, Farrow Cooper, as the kids might say, is all that and then some. <laughs> yeah, yes he is. Farrow <laughs> Cooper goes 78 yards, six catches, a buck 50 as well. Only the second third down conversion of the day for the Gamecocks, and it goes for 78 yards and a touchdown. They're two of eight on third downs, but that one produced a touchdown by Farrow Cooper, who now has four touchdown receptions, having a huge day again. Seems like we say that every single Saturday with Farrow yeah, Cooper. <laughs> that's right. But they, and you know what? They need him to. You know, they need him to step up. He's one of their big contributors, most explosive playmakers. This kick will head into the hedges in the end zone out to the 25-yard line. Well, Todd Ellis, former quarterback here at South Carolina, now the fourth voice of the Gamecock. Let's hear they how he sounded. They four, Orth, slant route. Farrell Cooper caught the 30. Farrell got one man to beat at the 40. 45, 50, can't run away. Farrell Cooper all by himself. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Farrell Cooper. When you need it, call on Superman. 78 yards. <laughs> Hope he's okay after that. It's not like he blew a vocal cord. <laughs> he might have fired up. He might have done that at Brad Paisley's show last night. <laughs> <laughs> Came in wounded today. Great call by Todd Ellis. Enjoy visiting with him every time we come to Columbia. South Carolina up three. Bandy. First down and ten from the 25. Out of the eye formation. Here comes Darius Sims working the left side. Boy, he's just got that... that extra step to get past that initial contact. He'll pick up six and a half there. Yeah, he's got a spurt, doesn't he? It's, it's like that quick five yards. It's the difference between a four or five yard game and a ten yard game. 
Second down. Batted in the air and picked off. Bryson Allen Williams with the interception. Well, McCrary was trying to get the ball to Stephen Shoy over the middle of the defense that's been victimized since probably the middle of the second quarter. But a great job by Allen Williams reading that quarterback's eyes. You see him looking in the backfield, got his right hand on that pass and batted it to himself. You get the tip and the assist. Great job by Allen Williams playing in relief of T.J. Holloman. And we've mentioned his names a couple of times. That last possession as well made some plays in the red zone when the Gamecock defense needed him the most. Seventh interception by the South Carolina defense this year. First and ten for the Vandy 45. Here goes Williams. Had one man to get past, couldn't do it. Marion Herring, who has been a real stud in that linebacking core this year, hanging on. Let's go downstairs to Casey. Well, Dave, just before that last defensive series, South Carolina defensive coordinator John Hope told his team, I want to see more takeaways, no more points. Obviously, the message was received here on the sideline. He's been begging for some takeaways. He's mentioned that more often, huh? It's a power of suggestion. Second down now. Play fake. Four steps up, fires over the middle. This time, Pat it passes caught at the 29 yard line. That'll go to Terry Guger, the red shirt freshman. Great protection. Nice time for Perry Orth. Clean pocket for him to step up into that throw and fire a strike to Guger. Quick snap. Here's Williams trying to find a little room, and he does. He's inside the 20. Down to the 13, the 17-yard line, a 13-yard pickup. Out of the split backfield. And Brandon Wilds is his lead blocker. And he just snuck right underneath the would-be tackle of Zach Cunningham. Hid behind his pads a little bit, right behind the lead block of Brandon Wilds, and then squirted forward. That's more of that two-back look that we anticipated seeing more of in the first half. First down. Here goes Brandon Watt. Cuts it back to the five. Knocked out of bounds at the two. Great block downfield by the true freshman, D.J. Neal. Made a couple of nice plays for the offense in the first half. But that block was key to get Brandon Wilds downfield. Derek Mason just did a 25-yard sprint. Snap, first charge timeout, Vanderbilt. He is trying to get his guys organized. The tempo has picked up for South Carolina. They have uh, looked very impressive in their last two drives. Well, they jumped right over the football, and you could see Derek Mason wasn't happy with the alignment. That's one of the things they've done better all season is aligning and playing good assignment football. But you can see a lot of communication to the right of the formation. All the, well, all the while, the ball was always going to be handed off to Brandon Wilds. You saw that great block by D.J. Neal. Tell you what, Pharaoh Cooper, he's a known commodity as a playmaker. But D.J. Neal, you see a guy like that as a true freshman contributing not only as a receiver, but as a blocker. And that's how you get those big runs, is your perimeter guys at the receiver position have to block. Out of the eye formation, first and goal from the two and a half. They'll go with Wild, stutter steps. Got back to the line of scrimmage, nothing to it. Looks like center Allen not shaking up on that play. As we've mentioned, we've seen a good bit of Zach Bailey. Looks like he's going to be able to shake it off. But there's a big pile right in the middle of that offensive front. Not playing with a bad ankle. Might have tweaked it on that possession. Second and goal. Or pump face to the corner. Up in the air. Drop. Looking for D.J. Neal, and he couldn't hang on. It looked like he had it initially, and as he was coming down, 
Ryan White got his right hand in there to knock it out. You see it? He almost had it trapped against the left side of his face mask. D.J. Neal with a nice block on the Brandon Wilds run. And that time, unable to come down with that reception. See Perry Orth, he thought he had it. So now it's third down and goal from the two-yard line. Brandon Wilds right into the heart of that Vanderbilt defensive front. Nothing happening there. That's twice, though, we've seen Brandon Wiles on these inside runs. There is no stutter step. you got to blow up in there when the ball's that close. Bringing out the field goal unit. Some booze in the stands. You think it's a good decision? I think you do. I think you go ahead and get these points. If, you if your defense can play well, the truth is your offense has you know, driven the football, but it's been hard in the red zone for one for the big play from Farrell Cooper. Elliott Fry, 47, 31 he's made. He's missed a couple from 39 and 55, but he... Usually when that coach up there talks about South Carolina, it's a bunch of garbage and a bunch of, bunch of BS, usually. That is the Death Valley, isn't it? Or is there another one around? <laughs> yeah. There's two of them. That's right, there's two Death Valleys. Yeah, okay, I forgot about that. Okay, we had a uh, sorry practice for the offensive guys. They looked pretty... Pitiful, pretty sad. Receivers and tight end dropping a bunch of passes. Thanks, <laughs> back here. Somebody needs to take a bath. <laughs> oh, dear. You know, uh, you know, uh, we, we've missed the coach already. It is uh, not going to be the same around here, around college football. You can't help but laugh. And, and you know what? I don't know if he meant to be funny or. It, it just, just came, came naturally out. to him. Yeah, I mean, it was, it, it I'm going to miss that. Do you have a favorite Spurrier? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. He's jabbing Clemson in that yeah. one, but the, but the other rival is, is Georgia, even in South Carolina, and, and having played at Georgia, he used to say, yo, Georgia signs all these great players. I don't know what happens to them. <laughs> <laughs> he just like, golly. But what hurts about those jabs is that they're a lot of them are true. I mean, right. they're always tipped with some piercing right. truth at the end of it. That uh, very rarely did he say something that hurt you, and it was baseless. Yeah. Usually it was something you already knew. In a day and age when everybody's politically correct and, and very concerned about what comes out of their mouth, he he, he just kind of wings it off the cuff. And uh, those days are, are, are gone. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. But uh, he'll still pop up on an interview or two and give us something good. You know, one other aspect of this is his son, Steve Spurrier Jr., one of his sons, still on the staff here at uh, South Carolina, and it's been a crazy week for him, as you might imagine, just with his dad stepping away. But he, on Thursday, he and his wife had uh, celebrated the birth of their seventh child, believe it or not. And also his son, Gavin, who was 14, threw his first touchdown pass in the JV high school game round. His granddad got to see it. First yep. hand. First down and 10 for the 25. Sweep and it's swallowed up by the guys in the black jerseys. Bryson Allen Williams, only a yard on the play. Well, you can see Allen Williams. I think he's acclimated to the pace of play now. DJ Smith as well in there, rotating at the safety position with Jordan Diggs. But Allen Williams, as we've mentioned, of course, pressed into service with the ejection of TJ Holloman. Started off a little bit slow. Actually, probably cost. A touchdown with Vanderbilt in the red zone, but he's really ramped up his production. Second down and nine. That goes Darius Sims in motion, but they'll run near side. And nothing going there with that run play. Ralph Webb hit by Phillip Dukes. He'll pick up three, and now you're looking at third down and six. I'm mentioning momentum and the way that this half started. South Carolina came out of the gates kind of slow. Ended up getting a big stop, forcing a field goal. And then the big play and a long drive. It didn't end up in a touchdown. But right now, this stadium is coming alive again here in the second half. South Carolina seeming to survive that lull that they were in when they came out of the tunnel to start this third quarter. Pocket collapses for Prairie. Trying to find a little extra time. Underneath, I think it was tapped 
by one of the defensive linemen, or was that Sky Moore who got up and got a finger on it? I believe it might have been Sky. Yeah, Sky Sky got about about a foot and a half off the ground, got his paw up there, but nowhere to go with this football. Where are you going to go if you're Johnny McCrary? You're being chased by Darius English. Once again, Vanderbilt having difficulty dealing with the left defensive end. Some of that pressure. And Sky Moore getting yet another batted ball for the Gamecock defense. Openshaw's punt. Fair catch called for at the 29 by Farrow Cooper. 42-yard punt. Gives us a chance to answer our AFLAC trivia question of the day. We told you Steve Spurrier is the all-time wins leader at two different schools, Florida and South Carolina. Can you name the other coach who holds that distinction? Well, if you said the legendary Bear Bryant, you would be correct. In Kentucky and, of course, at Alabama put together 232 wins. Just a whole hum career. <laughs> I'll tell you what, 208 nothing to shake a stick at. That's pretty impressive. And to build up this program the way that Coach Spurrier did, I mean, it's hard to rival that just about anywhere across the coaching. Here's D.J. Neal out to the 37. Eight-yard pickup. Thorne McGaster bringing him down. Now moving the pocket, playing off the play action a little bit and the two back sets. They've had some success out of that split backfield. Not only running, but also from a protection standpoint. Provides you an extra blocker to help out the offensive front to stave off the Vanderbilt pressure. David Williams in the game at running back. Williams will get the handoff. He'll be a sh yard shy, maybe a yard and a half shy of the first down line. Gives us a chance to go down to the case. Well, Dave, Vanderbilt linebackers coach Kenrick Thompson said on the sidelines, he said, we're blocking ourselves as much as they're blocking us. We have to handle this up-tempo better, and we have to process information faster. He said they're seeing a lot of misdirection, and he just wants them to get lined up as fast as they can. Thanks, Casey. Third down and short here. Plenty of time on the play clock. 15 seconds remaining as Perry Orth signals to his receivers. Option game near side. Good catch by Williams. He'll have the first down at the 45, at the 47. To midfield, loose football. Vanderbilt has it. The Commodores needed a big play defensively, and they just got it. You see that so often when a ball carrier is trying to keep his feet alive, struggling. And you see David Williams, and he gets a helmet right to the middle of his back. Ryan White, who was in on the pass breakup on the last drive in the end zone with D.J. Neal, comes up with the big force turnover off of the speed option. When they first lined up, Dave, I thought, well, this is a curious alignment, considering that it's third and short. The speed option was a good call. It was more than enough to get the conversion. Weatherly comes up with the fumble recovery. First down for the Commodores. Darius Sims in the backfield. We'll get it. Cut it back to midfield. And a flag comes in the middle of that line of scrimmage. Boy, if this is another negative play for Vanderbilt, they have had those all afternoon. It really has derailed a lot of their offensive possessions. Personal foul, clipping number 74 offense. Penalties 15 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. You don't see this call very often, but it's on left tackle Will Holden. And they're saying he rolled up on the back of Taylor Stallworth's legs. And that's what took him to the ground. Uh, you know, it wasn't like he, it didn't look at all like he was trying to dive at the back of anybody's legs. It wasn't a dirty play. He just didn't get his hat in front. And when your head's behind and you're going and block low on the defender, they're going to get you for clipping. You don't see that call very often, but that was a good call by the officials. That'll be the end of the third quarter. A quarter that saw South Carolina get some offense and the lead. Fourth quarter football coming up on the other side. 
boy, you look at the new alumni center. Beautiful building located in the Vista here in Columbia. 13 meeting conference ballroom, 16,000 square feet. Right outside that building last night, Brad Paisley wrapping up his college concert tour last night here in Columbia. Tell you what, it was a heck of a night. We were fortunate enough to get back there and uh, enjoy the show. Boy, he is some entertainer. That pass is almost picked off. A lazy throw to the outside, and Al Harris Jr. almost had the interception. It was looking for Latavius Rayford. First time we've seen Latavius Rayford targeted in this game. And Al Harris Jr. narrowly missing a pick, going back the other way. Back-to-back -back turnovers if he comes up with that. As it is, nice break on the ball for Al Harris Jr. Just going back to that clipping penalty, a great field position that Vanderbilt yeah. started off with. I mean, we've seen it time and time again. See if they can overcome it here. It is second down and 25. Pass underneath, caught by Rayford. Give him five yards, so now it's third down and 20. As we mentioned, it's one of the better third down teams by Vanderbilt. Not a lot of plays in the playbook for 25-yard gainers. You see Rayford on back-to-back -back targets in South Carolina playing off enough to make sure you keep the receiver in front of you. We've seen the South Carolina front do an excellent job of getting pressure just with their down four in these situations. Four-man rush. Over the middle pass is caught by Shoy at the 50, but he'll be eight yards shy of the first down, and it's fourth down. Right between both linebackers. He just settled in between Allen Williams and Sky Moore. Right in the middle, right along the hash mark. You'll see Shoy kind of squat right there in the sea. Of course, not enough. You dig that deep of a hole, the personal foul early on in a series of downs. So open Shaw, end over end kick, fair catch called for and taken by Farrow Cooper. Celebrating its 11th year sponsoring Dave Neal, Max Dinchcone, Casey Smith, the rest of our SEC network crew. We are just outside of the State Fair. And it's 166th year of operation. That's a lot of fried Twinkies, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't eat one. We were good boys, huh? <laughs> I never really thought of it like that, but yes, you're right. South Carolina back up inside the 20-yard line. We'll go with a handoff that'll pick up three to Brandon Wilds. Wilds running the football today. He has carried the ball 14 times, has 81 yards on the ground. Nice to have him back. Missed three games with those with that rib injury. Got banged up in that Georgia game, and it really hurt the South Carolina offense. They've missed him greatly. He's a big part of what they're trying to get started with this rushing attack. On second down, Orth looking to throw. Shoulder fit, going up top. A wobbly pass that is picked off. Vanderbilt has the interception. Jamel McIntosh, his second pick of the year. Pressure came from Stephen Weatherly that forced the errant throw. We mentioned Weatherly is a guy that needs to step up for Vanderbilt defensively. Beats the block of David Williams. Causes a floater to fall down in the secondary. Thanks, Dari. Here at 16 to 10. Time now for our conference to hurt right now. First down and 10. LeCrere. Nice tight spiral, and that one is picked off. Chris Lamont with the interception, his first of the year. And it's just giveaway, takeaway right now. I mean, it's, it's almost like punt return period of practice. You know, all these, these balls that just get up in the air and hang. Chris Lamont, he had his back turned back towards the quarterback the whole way. And he's just backing up. He's sizing this pass up for five or six yards. 
the ball hung up in the air far too long. Brock corner pressure from the other side. Trying to find Trey Ellis deep. Boy, I tell you what, you got to be scratching your head if you're Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator at Vanderbilt. You're asking your quarterback. Quick turn of the ball over. He has two interceptions today, nine on the year. They had good field position. Gave it away on their first play. Here's D.J. Neal. Hit it to 28 and stopped right in his tracks by Torin McGaster. That's a great point, Dave. That's, that's the best field position they've had all game long. First time they've started it on the positive side of the field. And they just give it right back. I mean, really all you lost was time if you're South Carolina. Speaking of time, 12-15 to go here in the fourth quarter. Out of that pistol formation. Play clock, plenty of time, seven seconds. And come near side. Pitch it to Wild. He has some room to the 40 and hit at the 42-yard line. That'll be good enough for a first down after a 14-yard pickup. McIntosh gets credit for the stop. I love that speed option play. You know, we've seen it already run on third down. It worked great with David Williams running the football, but resulted in a fumble. That time, Brandon Wilds fields it cleanly and gets upfield, maintains possession all the way through. First down and 10 from the 42-yard line. Wilds, by the way, with 96 yards on the ground now. No run. The pitch to the short side. Give him a yard. Marion Herring with the tackle. I like it so much to go right back to it. One of the things that head coach Sean Elliott mentioned to us that they changed, that they do more ball handling drills. Instead of some more of that pat and go, throwing fades, allowing their quarterbacks to work with their running backs a little bit more, their footwork, who needs to be where. We've seen now on three speed options. All of them played very well. We've seen them run that play in the past, of course, but something they're emphasizing in practice more. Wilds will move to the left, play clock, down to two seconds. They just do uh, they didn't get the, they did not get the snap off in time. Delay a game. Before the snap, delay of game, number ten offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. You can see it as it's bleeding down, pressure coming. And that snap held just half a second too long, not even that. A lot of times though, you'll see the sidelines will come in there and they'll break a timeout when they see it dropping down like that where it's that close. He goes Wilds. He's to the 40. Nehemiah Mitchell will get that tackle after a gain of four. And Wilds up to 100 yards. Give him 101. His sixth career 100-yard game. He had 106 versus Kentucky early in the season. Once again, we see that setting up. These, these third and longs, an area that South Carolina has struggled mightily all game long. And this down, certainly at this distance, we've seen one go to the house on a quick slant, but otherwise, that's not been met with a lot of success. So third down, let's call it 10. Or lifting it up. As Williams, let's see, they're going to spot it right at midfield. He's going to be two yards shy of the first down line. Let's see what Sean Elliott decides to do here. You can see Williams, as he made that, Catch. He just couldn't slow down quite enough to get upfield. Coach Elliott's going to play field position and punt this football away. You see Orth, he's shown some good touch on passes. That time, Williams, his route pulled him a little too far towards that sideline. Didn't have enough room to turn it upfield to get the yardage needed. He could have done it if he could have made that turn. Sean Kelly, end over end kick, fair catch called for and taken at the 11. Lattimore broke one tackle, two tackles, three tackles, still on his feet. He might score. He's in. 
touchdown. Clinch in their first SEC East title in school history. Steve Spurrier taking South Carolina where they've never been before. Brad Nessler with that call, and he's exactly right. Coach Spurrier took this place to places they haven't been before in terms of victories and SEC championship game. And forever, Steve, the fans here certainly remember and will remember what he meant to this program. And, you know, he said he he's disappointed in the fact that he couldn't leave on his own terms riding off in the Georgia Dome on the shoulders of his players after winning an SEC championship. That was the goal. They got close, closer than they'd ever been before, but didn't quite get it done, narrowly missing it in 2010. And really it was the West Division schedule that was kind of their undoing yeah. a couple of those other seasons. You, know, you win 11 games, but uh, one season was Arkansas that got a victory that was enough to knock South Carolina out of winning that division. That was a four-year run, this, the likes of which uh, this program had never seen before. Where this place was hopping. Second down. Darius Sims. Boy, some nifty footwork out to the 25 yard line, a gain of 11 yards. Isaiah Johnson, along with Darius English, come up to make the play, but Sims having a heck of a game. How about six carries and 104 yards? I might want to. Ramp up his touches even more, especially out of that backfield. Remember, last year against the South Carolina team, Sims had two kickoff returns for touchdowns. There's a flag coming in. Sims, at early in the first month of the season, Sims... Holding, number 53, offense, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Sims was a defensive back last year, was perhaps their best offensive weapon as a DB and kick returner. Yeah, had the only score versus Kentucky a season ago for Vanderbilt as well. But again, Jake Bernstein working on Dante Sawyer. And number 95 has been a handful to the left guard for Vanderbilt today. And I'll tell you what, Bryson Allen Williams, that kid's really come on. He's playing some pretty good football here in the second half. I don't know if Bernstein's even wearing shoulder pads. <laughs> Making his 35th career start. McCrary. Over the middle. Has Nathan Morris. Second catch by Nathan today. Bryson Allen Williams on the coverage. A gain of 12. But an injured Commodore back at the 10-yard line. Flag back at the 32. Pass interference. Number 83, offense. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Replay first down. And that's Jake Bernstein who is down on the ground, the aforementioned one, the senior. Wow, and they're working on his shoulder. God, I regret even bringing it up. I noticed that earlier. When you looked at his shoulder pads, it was almost like, like he just had a skeleton's on. Is it what you practice in sometimes when you're in shorts? And just kind of a foam pad. Yeah, I mean, there's hardly anything to those pads. Now they work on Well, last night, the South Carolina basketball programs held their Garnet and Black Madness. Over a 1,000 people were in attendance <laughs> as the players entertained the crowd. Frank Martin, Dawn Staley. Boy, Dawn Staley has done a remarkable job. What all three-pointers and dunks last night. Even the coaches getting in the game. A lot of games throughout the evening, but... Last season, South Carolina goes 17 and 16. First time they've had a winning season in a while, but the women's team put on a clinic. They were dominant. Reached the final four, and they return their top three scores from last year and look out again for those lady hoopsters from South Carolina. In that video, I almost didn't recognize Coach Martin. He was, he was so calm. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that picture up right there. That <laughs> might be more appropriate. His uh, usual on court oh, demeanor. Enjoy hanging out with Coach Martin during hoop season, which gets underway in just about a month. So, first down and forever. 28 yards to go for the first down, and it'll still be about 28 yards to go for the first down. Sky Moore on that tackle now in double figures with 10. 
and you can give Sky 68 on the year. Yeah, he's just so active in the middle of that Gamecock defense. And, you know, that time, really, the play was made by Taylor Stallworth, who got the better of Spencer Pulley. Jake Bernstein was out for just one snap. His backup, Bruno Reagan, was in for a moment. Bernstein back in the game, ready to go. Second down. McCrary deep over the middle. That one is picked off at the 25-yard line. It's Sky Moore with yet another interception. He has four on the year. Well, it was Sky Moore in the opening game versus North Carolina with two interceptions in his own end zone. And he's proven to be a playmaker not only as a tackler, he's just, this ball's off the mark. Well, once again, we've, we've mentioned this out of Johnny McCrary. You know, he can be opportunistic with his legs, but this is just an inaccurate pass. There's three picks in this game. And otherwise, you know, Sky Moore, he's, he's trailing that route and behind the intended receiver. But that was just a well-thrown ball that had to have been intended for the linebacker of South Carolina. That is the 11th career interception now for Sky Moore. First down inside the red zone. They'll give it to Wild. He's to the 10, down to the 9, but a flag comes in late. Six and a half minutes to go in this one. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 44 defense. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. First down. Well, that's Nehemiah Mitchell. Then called his name much tonight. But you see, he gets his hands all up in Adam's face mask and just never takes it back down. That's an easy call. We've seen a couple calls you don't you rarely, if ever, see a clipping call. Now hands to the face. It's wild. He gets it down. Late whistles as the scrum is stopped at the four-yard line. No game. Vanderbilt came into this game. Third fewest penalized team in the conference. 38 yards a game. But today it's 57 yards of penalties. And even though that was a defensive penalty there, it's been their offensive penalties. Usually on a first down situation, they're chasing chains all day. That's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, it immediately takes you out of whatever rhythm you had. Change your play call just to start that possession. A couple of tight ends in the game. Or throwing over the middle and too high. The play was there, but the pass was not. It's funny, Dave. We talked about the touch passes. He's been right on on those touch passes all game. And that's what this required. Just a little touch. Just dump it over the top of the linebackers' heads. And Sean Elliott, yeah, he can't believe it. Just take a little bit off of that one. Well, here's a third down. And it's not been good for South Carolina. Just two of 11. But one of them was a third down conversion that went 78 yards for a touchdown to Farrell Cooper. Play clock down to six, five. They get the snap away. The slant to Cooper through his hands. Another pass that was there. Look, last two targets for Cooper where he could have come up with catches and did take a, nothing away from him and what he means to this team, but two drops now. And Sean Elliott was trying to get a timeout call. The officials didn't see him. He was standing on about the 25-yard line trying to get timeout called with about four seconds on that play clock. Adam Butler, the big fella, down on the ground as the Vanderbilt training staff attends to him. Junior has a sack today. Well, this was Sean Elliott right before that snap. You can see, you know, Derek Mason did that as well on a red zone play where his defense was being pressured. South Carolina was right over the football, but Mason ran all the way down the field, made sure the officials saw him. That 
halftime, Coach Elliott. It's funny, sometimes these guys, you got to run down there and get the officials' attention. On the watch, ESPN app. So the field goal unit on again, 22-yard attempt. Elliott Fry has hit three of five today. This from the far hash mark. Out of the hold of Sean Kelly. He has hit from 47, 31, and 19. He has missed from 39 and 55. And Fry will split the uprights. Now South Carolina has nine points off of Vanderbilt turnovers, and that is the difference in the game. You can see that this defense has done a good job. The first turnover really self-inflicted for Vanderbilt. One of their own players causing Ralph Webb to fumble, but the defense has been opportunistic, found ways to get the ball back for the offense. And they haven't converted the touchdowns, but the field goals have certainly come in handy. And you go back and rewind to the fourth and short on the goal line. Sean Elliott decided to kick a field goal. That was more than enough now with that, notching that field goal now to make it a two-possession game. The defense has made him right ever since getting the ball back for the Gamecock offense. Well, tonight at 10.30 on the South Carolina 399, Vanderbilt 298. 59 plays for South Carolina, 66 plays for the Commodores. Nathan Marcus will come up with Nathan the ball. On the return. Boy, Johnny McCrary today. Three interceptions. At that time, he'll. Allen Williams did a good job tipping as it over the middle. Chris Lamonts just playing center field on that pick. And Sky Moore doing an excellent job of tracking underneath the route. It's just a poorly thrown football. The quarterback at Vanderbilt. He's a guy that they all know. Talk with the coaches. He's got to get better. He's improved from a season ago where it was basically a revolving door at quarterback. He's been the guy this season, but he's got to improve his ball security. First down and 10. Surefield can't catch up to it. Clock stops, 5.19 to go in this one. See, Dave, you know, we mentioned coming into this game how often Vanderbilt ends up throwing the football. And other than Darius Sims, they were never really capable of getting Ralph Webb established in this game. There were moments where you thought as if they were going to get into a nice rhythm. But it ends up being a lot largely Johnny McCrary, especially in the first half, being opportunistic with his legs. Second down and 10, McCrary underneath Ralph Webb. He's to the 48-yard line, stopped there, a couple of yards shy of the first down. D.J. Gurley, the first man there. Webb, nice stutter step, has the first down and a lot more. He's to the 30-yard line, a gain of 21. Well, you bring him up, back-to-back -back plays. One in the passing game, and now a nice run on the backside. I mean, just does a great job. Getting a nice juke right there on Marquavius Lewis. Making him bite inside on the backside of the zone run. McCrary looking to throw. Comes near side. South Carolina playing way off the ball. Rayford with an easy catch. Spins down to the 25-yard line. Five-and-a-half-yard pickup. Beat me to it, Dave. Uh, Think of the same thing. You obviously want to keep receiver in front of you. Make them earn it. But 10-yard cushion, that's an easy pitch and catch. Too easy to pick up five. Second down. From the 24-yard line. Four-man rush. McCrary. Comes near side again. Pass caught. This one goes to Latavius Rayford again. A gain of seven. Chris Lamonts on the coverage. Back-to-back -back completions in front of Chris Lamonts. 
and playing a little bit tighter. It was about a five-yard cushion off the line of scrimmage. But right now, Vanderbilt receivers just running to the sticks and coming back. There's a slant. Boy, Sherfield having a tough day. Young man who was uh, busted onto the scene as a wide receiver this year with 34 catches to lead the Commodores. First in the conference in receptions per game and second in receiving yards per game. We've mentioned that Johnny McCrary's had his difficulties, been off target. But that's twice on this drive alone where Sherfield could have, should have come up with a catch for his quarterback. McCrary in trouble, lost the football. South Carolina has it. Another Vanderbilt turnover. And guess who came up with the football? It's like Velcro to Sky Moore. A flag comes in late. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number six and 35, South Carolina. That is their first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. The penalty is 50 yards, South Carolina's ball, first down. Sky Moore with an interception and a fumble recovery today. Ten total tackles. He is having a heck of an afternoon here at williams Bryce Stadium. Gamecocks have the footballs late in the. Back at Williams Bryce Stadium. Another turnover by Vanderbilt. Five this afternoon. And now it's into the evening. And South Carolina's lead is nine. They're only up nine. Yeah, of all those turnovers, as we mentioned, they've come away with nine points off of them. Done a great job of getting the ball back, but offensively. They've only converted one touchdown all game. About to approach 400 yards of offense, and they get it here on this run by Brandon Wilds. And now it's a matter of South Carolina chewing up some clock and holding on to the football. Both these teams in search of their first conference wins. Derek Mason has yet to enjoy the fruits of an SEC win in his tenure in a year and a half in Nashville. Timeout taken by Vanderbilt. Boyd intercepted at the 43 by Moore. Five turnovers. It's impossible to win in this venue. First time now in the history of this 111 times these two have matched that South Carolina has run off five wins in a row against Clemson. Well, I tell you what, there was a nice run by South Carolina. Over Clemson, their rivals, five straight. Going to miss the old ball coach, the head ball coach, I should say, because remember, he doesn't like old. It makes him feel old. That's right. right. Oh, yeah. The HBC. Simple. Changed the game with that fun and gun offense back in the early 90s in the swamp. Here's Perry Orth passes. Oh. First down, gain of nine. You know, as we wrap up today, and it's a new day of South Carolina football, you, you know, it's going to be a big loss for the fan. You know, he's a guy that certainly spoke his mind, understood there's life outside of the walls of the football buildings, always provided comic relief, whether he meant it or not. He's a guy that just wanted to draw up ball plays, wanted to pitch it around the field, wanted to see if some of these creative ideas would work every Saturday. That's what kept him going. He always used to say, just coach him up the best he could. And uh, in some small way, I think he's coached us all up a little bit over the years. He certainly made it a lot more entertaining. And it was fun to watch his teams on the field to play and sometimes even more entertaining to hear his assessment of what just happened on the previous four quarters. Watch this little spin move. Ooh. There you go, Brandon. Oh, Braxton Miller? It's not a spin move anymore, right? No. Ever it's since Braxton Miller dropped that spin? <laughs> right. <laughs> Played a high school, won a high school state championship on this field. Would come to the game with his dad as a kid. 
and you know this is something that he really, really wants. And he's got a half a season. We heard Ray Tanner say it. He's got six games to prove his ability as a head coach. Regardless of that, though, this opportunity for Sean Elliott, people know him from coast to coast now. That's right. No, no, he, he splashed onto the scene. You know, Eric Wolford took the job at Youngstown State, and that's what opened the door for Sean Elliott to get here to South Carolina, his boyhood team that he pulled for, having played it out in state. This is his chance to kind of announce his candidacy for head job. Casey? Well, Dave, before the game, we were talking to Sean Elliott, and he said it almost feels like he's about to walk down the aisle again. That's how nervous he was today. He said, but hey, me and my wife have worked out great. I hope to see the same thing on the field. Well, his wife was very nervous when, he, when she found out that Coach Spurrier was um, resigning from this job. They are moving into a new house. She was afraid they might lose their job, but he went home and said, honey, this is a great opportunity. I got it. I handled this. Don't Talk you? about a pendulum swing, right? <laughs> right. And then he ate some Chef Boy RV. Like he did when he was uh, starting as a coach at App State. <laughs> On third down and short, no gain. Ryan White with the trip up, but the clock moving closer to two minutes. We'll dip under two minutes. Vanderbilt out of timeouts. By the way, one interesting note. How about this? Back in 2008, after six games of the season, up the road at Clemson. That's when Tommy Bowden How about left that? as Clemson and Dabo Sweeney took over the job to the day now, to the day, the same exact day. That's amazing. And I think that's worked out pretty well. The interim head coach there, I think Dabo's done a pretty good job. And who would have thought, you know, when, when Dabo Sweeney was named the head coach, yeah. who'd ever heard of Dabo? Exactly. Nobody was talking about him. Well, the clock winding down, and South Carolina will take a timeout with 129 to play. Time now for our Quicken Loans player of the game. And we had a couple of selections we could have chosen from, but tell you what, Sky Moore, you know, we, we were talking to John Hoke in our meetings, the defensive coordinator of South Carolina, and, and I said, you, you look at the numbers, are they legit numbers? And he's like, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's a ball player. You know, he's not a vocal guy, you know, he's not a big leader from a rah-rah standpoint, but when you get him out on the football field, he just makes plays for you, and he has done so the entire football game. Pretty sure tackler, but a guy that has come away with the football, ended up in the backfield, made plays and coverage. He's one of those guys that you can build your defense around, and really that defensive front, they've done a pretty good job. They did a good job pressuring the passer. I'd be pleased with that defensive effort. Punt is taken by Ryan White. Nowhere to go. A 41-yard punt, no return. With 1:19 on the clock, it's uh, it's a must-win for for both those clubs. No question. Yeah, if you're Georgia, you got to get that win over Missouri. And all eyes, Baton Rouge with the Florida Gators going up against LSU. First down. McCrary, nowhere to go. Trying to set up a little screen to Ralph Webb, and it is snuffed out by Darius English. Bob will stop with 116. The numbers for McCrary tonight, 20 of 37, 170. A touchdown and three interceptions. Three interceptions, and that is going to be tough for his coordinator, Andy Ludwig, to digest tonight. That's 10 on the year. It's not a lot of diversity, what they're able to do. You know, early on, they got Darius Sims going. He's He's been a bright spot for the Vanderbilt offense, but he can't be a staple. You know, it's, it's hard to be using a guy like that to more change of pace. And that one is dropped by Ralph Webb. Third down and 10. Pressure came from English again. And that's the other side of it, too, is Johnny McCrary has been harassed most of the night. In South yeah. Carolina... They haven't been getting them on the ground very often, but there's been seven pressures at least. And they've affected some of these throws. Johnny McCrary has really never had an opportunity to get comfortable in the pocket. Pass underneath to the 30-yard line goes to Stephen Shoy and... He's driven back, but they'll spot his forward progress. 
See where they do end up spotting it at the 31-yard line. At the 30-yard line, so he'll be three and a half yards shy of the first down. So fourth down and last chance effort here for Vanderbilt to keep this drive alive with 44, 43 seconds to go. Incomplete. And that'll do it. So South Carolina under their interim head coach, Sean Elliott, will capture win number one. You know, it wasn't pretty all the way through. And at the same time, it's going to be one of the most beautiful things Sean Elliott's <laughs> ever seen. <laughs> you got that right. Hey, listen, he had some decisions to make today. They were down inside the five-yard line. It was fourth and goal from the two or three. Decided to kick the field goal. Some boo birds came out, but had a couple other decisions to make. And at the end of the day, the big board says 19 for South Carolina and 10 for Vanderbilt. And he stuck to his guns and coached the way he was going to coach. Right. And I tell you, it looked to me like his team really responded. I don't think that they were overhyped to start this football game. There was a little bit of a lull coming out in the third quarter. But they fought through that and credit the defense of continually giving their head coach and Sean Elliott and the offense an opportunity to fight their way into this ball game. Vero Cooper with the big play and the defense repeatedly getting the football back. I don't think he would have thought some 25 years ago when he was playing high school football trying to win a national uh, a state championship in high school and coming here with his dad to watch the Gamecocks play that he would be roaming the sidelines as the head coach of this university. But that is the case, and you can see him down there with Casey right now. Big smile. Let's go down there now. Casey. Coach, I know you're probably a little bit cold right now. Your first win as the head coach of South Carolina. How do you describe this feeling? Well, I'm just thankful. I mean, our guys could have quit all week. I mean, they had every reason to quit. They played their tails off. I mean, it's just amazing. The resiliency of what they just have overcome. It's just like our great state. It's just like our great state. They kept driving. They kept believing. They finished this contest. It probably wasn't pretty, but nobody. <laughs> but nobody I got a bath with you, Coach. But nobody expected it to be pretty. I just love this team. I owe a lot of respect to Vanderbilt. They're, they're a hell of a team. I'm just happy as can be. Congratulations, Coach. Thank Enjoy this one. Much. Thank you all. <laughs> Casey took it like a champ. <laughs> a happy man. Uh, you know, uh, just been a crazy couple of weeks here in Columbia, and, and maybe this will bring some smiles to some folks who, who needed it. Good win for South Carolina. Once again, our final score, Gamecocks 19 and Vanderbilt 10. So for Matt Stinchcomb, Casey Smith, the rest of our crew, I'm Dan.